to the <laughs> Sean podcast where I'm literally going from one topic to the next topic and pretending like it's a new day. Uh, we've got Lisa Same Foyles place. here, who's got Hi. a new podcast and an awesome band to which Mari's rocking some merch right behind her. Check we got out. links to Later all that queen. below. Um, if you want more of Lisa Foyles, you check out the first episode that we had here on the channel. Uh, go, that's last week's episode. But today we're we're diving into the history of Lisa Foyles' career. Back to the Nickelodeon days, obviously spending time on all that. What was that like, first off? Just like backstage of all that. Was it was it a fun romp? Was everyone just pretty exhausted, like just trying to like, you know, keep up with schedules or how was that like? Well, I gotta tell you, like it's it's the it's kind of the cutest story because I really was just a diehard Nickelodeon fan before I got on the show. I feel like growing up, there was always kids that lean Disney and there were kids that lean Nickelodeon. I'm not saying which ones I thought were cooler. I'm just saying that I lean Nickelodeon and uh, they, it just had more of an edge in my opinion. Hands down, but, Nickelodeon was better. Right? Like the shows yeah. on Nick had more of an edge. We had Ren and Stimpy with all, like, all this mm -hmm. crazy stuff that you look back like, how was that on television? Nickelodeon was just doing it. Yeah, um, Rock was Modern Life. Yeah, Legit. So I was like, a, exactly. So I was a huge, I was a huge All That fan. I was a huge Nickelodeon fan. So when I got on the show, it was just absolutely a dream come true in the purest form. Like it really was like a, a dream coming true for my 14 year old self. I think I was 14. Um, uh, but yeah, it really honestly was four of the best years of my life. I had a blast every single day. Was that recording in Orlando or was that an LA studio? We were the first season of all that to come to LA, I believe. Yeah. They, everything was at uh, Nickelodeon Studios in Orlando, Florida. Florida. That little. Uh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Thing they'd say. Yeah. And they we, would, we were they would on show Nick the on globe. Sunset. Yeah, when they were. Yes, the globe. Yeah, yeah. Yep, with the, the slime fountains the slime, and everything. Yeah. Uh, but we were on uh, we were on Sunset Boulevard in LA, and uh, recently I'm in a band. It's called Von Bolt. We recently played the Whiskey Go Go. Link down LA. below. Link yes. down below. And uh, after we played one of the shows, we drove on Sunset Pass, Nick on Sunset, where my uh, Nickelodeon studios used to be. And they're all apartments now. And it was no. very, very sad. <laughs> that is sad. I was like, did you stop and take a photo? I don't even know where these uh, studios are. Oh, like, okay. That makes so sense. So much of me in that building, my family, like, oh, it was, you know, four of the best years ever. And just to have it be gone is so sad. Uh, but yeah, to answer your question, um, it was just an absolute blast. Of course, there were hard days. It was a job. Yeah. And it was, uh, you know, it was. And you were a kid doing a job too. I was a kid. Yeah. So, uh, you know, every day my mom was like, hey, you remember, you can go out there and have fun, but like these people want to go home to their families. So don't go out there and just screw up your lines 10 times in a row. Like you go out there, you do what you got to do. You be your best the first time so that all these lovely crew members can go home to their families. So hey, like I definitely treated it professionally. Some perspective. Wow. Oh, yeah. But I also just absolutely had a blast. I mean, how can yeah, we, we still don't have that mentality on set. I'm like, mm -hmm. hey, camera guy, you're going home tomorrow. Hope you <laughs> kissed your kid. Goodbye. <laughs> You've worked with them for 10 years. You're like, hey, camera guy. He's like, I have a name. Uh, like, refuse to learn guy. it. My name is Ralph. Okay, Chad. Go. <laughs> um, do you I know that you mentioned Ren and Stempy. Uh, do you did we all we all watched Nicktoons, right? That was a thing we all had cable we're all special you know angry beavers underrated show my so underrated would, watching nickelodeon was like a special treat for me because i would run to my neighbor's house and we would watch but like i wasn't always watching because i didn't have cable did you have a favorite show that you'd run over to watch not a favorite show specifically. It's just whatever was on. I know I watched Ren and Stimpy. I watched a lot of Ren and St not Ren and Stimpy. Sorry. Um. Uh. What is it called? Um. Rocco's Modern Life. Rocco's Modern Life. Yeah. Thank you. I hot take. Angry Beavers is better than both Rocco's Modern yeah. Life and uh. Agreed. And what you call it? Uh, I'm glad to see so much angry beaver love. Yeah. I did not think uh, we'd be walking into that. Um, oh, my which favorite. Oh, might be a little spoiler it. for my picks. Um, I I think the stick stickly block, like for me growing up, was like pivotal because like you know all of the great cartoons like you know Doug, Rugrats, Rocco, um, Angry Beavers. Yeah, stick stickly was the man, and uh, respect to him. Lisa, did you have a favorite Nickelodeon show? I mean, obviously, Angry Beavers was my all-time favorite. Uh, I definitely leaned toward uh, the characters that just caused complete chaos for the fun of it. 
You know, I think that's why I connected with SpongeBob a whole bunch. <laughs> yeah. There was so there was so much just chaos in Angry Beavers, uh, just just for the fun. You know, Rocco was amazing, but I couldn't relate to Rocco. He held a corporate job. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> corpo. That's a first, that's a hot take. It's the first time I've heard <laughs> someone call Rocco a corpo. <laughs> well, you know, I, yeah. I can't, couldn't relate with that. Couldn't relate. He with had that. his nine to five, then you know, came home and just kind of lived his life with his dog. Uh, totally Elizabeth, what were you beavers. watching? Yeah. Wait, yeah. For those of us who have not watched Angry Beavers, can you pitch it real quick? Like what? Yeah, like why so it's there's good? uh so okay, so get this. I've got a TV show for you, all right? So there's two <laughs> brothers. One's a little more of a straight man, one's a crazy, out of control, uh, uh insane person, and but they're beavers, so they're not people, they're beavers and they live together and they go on in insane adventures, such as one of them wants to become a Lipazon or stallion. That happened. There's one episode <laughs> where one has a best friend and it's a stump, and the brother's jealous that one has a best friend who's a stump, <laughs> yeah. a literal stump. Uh yeah, so there you go. The spawning <laughs> yeah. episode. I will always remember. Norbert was kind of like the dude as a, yeah. as a beaver. Oh, yeah. Um, that's, yeah. Funny. that's funny because uh, that that would definitely, that's up there in my picks. I was thinking of going that, but um, also I was a big fan of uh, Pete and Pete, if we're talking Nick shows. Live uh, action, all right, a little yeah. Snick action. So you said, what's your favorite Nick show? Yeah, it counts, yeah, it yeah. counts. Um, but, you know, our, our, oh. Artie, the strongest man? In the world, <laughs> yeah, just the a characters phenomenal are so performance good. by Artie. Just all the weird, like villains and storylines and stuff. You had endless Mike. Uh, I would love to write a D and D campaign based around the like the adventure of D. &D. D, &D. Yeah, oh, so it's dude. all like you know, like South Park doing like D and D, where it's like it's still the characters that are still playing games and, and having fun. Uh, Lisa, I'm uh, either is giving up on us. I think we need to pause for one minute. Great. Or <laughs> you brought up Pete and Pete, and now Lisa's gone. Yes, yeah, she's gonna actually bring <laughs> one of the Pete's away. on camera. Yeah, she so actually on, has. I have, uh, I have a Pete right here. Yeah. <laughs> ah! oh! <laughs> yeah. I remember that guy, the ice cream man. What was his name? Mr. Swirly. Right Sorry, I, think... I have several Pete and Pete like little uh, you know trinkets on my shelf here for my podcast and the the, the mr uh, mr tasty's on there mr, mr. tasty yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm a huge i'm a huge uh, P &P fan i've got to hang yeah. out with danny and mike many times oh I've nice chat with them many times so they're they're the coolest guys very, growing very up cool. I, i'm pretty sure michelle trackenberg i think was my first tv crush i'm pretty yeah, sure she was on pete and pete that's right yeah mm -hmm. she was one uh, of and then one of the Pete's greatest friends. comedies of all time with uh with uh euro trip uh, so we've talked about some of our favorites, but who do you think, and this is, this is a different angle to take, but what Nicktoon character growing up do you think you could identify the most with? So easy. Um, this is the easiest answer. Honestly, oh, I hope it's different than mine. What, what do you got? Oh, it's it's Hey Arnold. It's the kids from Hey Arnold. Oh, they Hey did Arnold. Such an amazing oh, job I want to change my favorite of, answer. Of depicting just the average child. I mean, I, I feel like Malcolm in the Middle did that for sitcoms where they just yeah. showed the average relatable household of what really happens in a family. It's not pristine. There's just crap everywhere. Yeah, every, there's chaos. Like, you know, everything's out of control. I feel like Hey Arnold really honestly, honestly depicts... Whoa, I just had a surge. What's going on? Oh my gosh, my... Power surge? Power are you surge? still are you still recording? Well, still me? rolling? Power surge? Yes. Yes. You're kind of flickering out on oh the Discord gosh, though, which me? is weird. All of my and lights now I just can't hear you. flashed. Uh oh. Whoa. Okay, all of the lights in my house just flashed. What? That was really scary. G -g -ghost. <laughs> like everything just. Oh my gosh, my house is haunted. Um, somebody doesn't want me to talk about. That's hey Arnold, Joven, I, that, get I get it. That's Joven's okay. fault. Joven has a tendency of his ghosts. Uh, I I stuck a yeah stuck a fork in an electric people. socket and now ghosts are with you. No, but anyway, I was rambling, but I, I honestly felt there were so many episodes of that show where I was like, that's me. Like, I'm also hot in the summer and I'm just looking for something to cool me down. I'm also playing, you know, kickball with my friends in an, you know, in a cul-de-sac. Like, the, it was just so honest. Mm. And uh, I just love that. There were so um, I would kind of put Hey Arnold in a category with Boy Meets World on a show that was a little unapologetic with its messaging. It's like, hey, we're kids and we're talking to other kids and here's life and here's what's going on. Um, like there was literally an episode about like the Vietnam War. Yes. Um, and uh, like when Helga sees a therapist and we see like the upbringing, uh, upbringing of her versus her sister, like it was just it was a very good show yeah just the different walks of life you know everybody that lived in that apartment complex you had mr Wynn. you know you just had you just all these different 
so much uh, representation in that show yeah. that you weren't getting on a lot of other kids shows. Um, and I didn't realize it was happening at the time, but like looking back, I'm like, damn, like that's so cool that they did that. Nickelodeon and, and you know, to its credit, Disney had some really good diverse shows um, that, that put a lot of different people front and center before, you know, like it, it was a great example and it was very well done um, to kind of tap into an answer that I thought nobody would know about. I'm really surprised. I always thought I was a Norbert uh, from Angry Beavers, uh, but no, I I was a Daggett. You're as Daggett. much as I Daggett. wanted to be a Norbert, it was just that anxious energy with wild and crazy things I was saying and dumb ideas and just trying to keep up. Thought I was the coolest kid in the room. Clearly was the younger, weirder brother. <laughs> Gosh, how about all the little like B movies they had in that show too? Like the Curse of the Mummy's Curse and like all those little black and white. Just movies. writing for that show, you knew people writing on that show were just fans of really cool things. I believe, mm. was it Richard Horvitz? who was the voice of Dag, also the voice of Sam mm -hmm. from Invaders. Yes. Cool. Uh, and He's the coolest. So many great things. I think I actually worked with Brendan Rogers uh, on his cartoon uh, from Stuff of Legends Days. Um, Lasercorn, did you have a a Nicktoon character that you could relate to? Man, I was also I just everyone loves Norbert, huh? I was also an angry uh an angry beavers fan. I love Norbert. Uh let me let me go in a different direction though. How about uh Did you also originally go with the Angry Beavers answer? Uh well, that was my that was my if it had to be a tune, if it was live action, mm -hmm. then Pete and Pete. I also I can... um how about let's go let's go Doug Funny. Doug he's Funny just a, just a relatable oh. everyman. Yeah, he's just trying to yeah. get this get through the world. You I know? I did watch yeah. a lot of Doug. Doug was Yeah, that's doing his own I thing. start my day, I'm brushing my teeth, and that song plays Dude, in my head. Well, man. Quail that, man, yeah, quail man. That, that Halloween costume like still kills. Any, yeah. <laughs> any, any year you be quail man. It's like this guy like, gets quail it. Quail yeah, yeah, people get to wear underwear on the outside. That's a fun thing to do. Quail man and silver skeeter. I never silver liked. Skeeter. Uh, I never liked uh, the Beatles, but loved the Beats. The Beats. Beats yeah, had bops. I also do not like uh, the Beatles, but yeah, uh, Killer really Tofu. Uh, you just you, yeah. you, you, you both banging on a trash can. Really weird hot takes there. Why are yeah. we so friends with these two people? They're, they're wow. like the Beatles. I don't know. They drop that like now. The they drop that huh? now on us. What? Yeah. yeah, you're stuck with us. What? Weird secret you okay, kept wait. from us for years. Is it like okay? Which version of the Beatles do you not like? Do you not? Do yeah, you not I don't like, like the their weird. They're like I love my girlfriend, or like at the end when they're like, "Here's the story of Mr. Cheesecake." Like what? I, so <laughs> I, I think it might have started like my dad was into like you know weird animation cartoons, um, a lot of stuff that came from like England. So like the anime studio just was never up to the standards of like what Disney was doing. And so I remember being a little kid and watching the Yellow Submarine and being like, "This is fucking weird and oh, no, boring." Yeah. Yeah, Yellow like Submarine you really sucks. Doing the drugs. I am the Eggman, yeah. Cuckoo Kachu, all their weird hippie music. Uh, yeah, but like the, as a the, band, when still straight lace. No. You can't hate the band. You can hate your uh, You know, you one who really band. had something going. Uh, what was, what was uh, good from the uh, Oko? Oko Ono. Yoko Ono, yeah. Yoko, Yoko ono. ono. You know, she had something. Really, that's where I find my love of oh, the Beatles. Oh, they're trolling us. Yes, I get this it. makes they're sense. Yeah. I get it now. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Um, okay, so my, my pick is obviously much later because I did not really grow up with it, but as soon as I saw it, I knew that I had a kinship with it, which is Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh, also a Nickelodeon show. How did we go this long without Nick talking too? about that? Yeah. And um, for me, it's Azula. She is on the fire tribe and she's like the 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 sort of like heir to kind mm -hmm. of like the fire tribe. And she's got a lot of issues and anger and a lot of, I don't know, things that I'm Ooh. like, you know, this oddly matches up. Pick. Yeah, great yeah, my pick. boy uh, Jack DeSena, who was on all that with me, was the voice of Sokka. On, uh, mm -hmm. Oh, no Avengers. way. Yeah. I was Peter sees himself as a, as as Sokka, and I'm like, yeah. you know, that kind of tracks. Sokka's <laughs> a good pick. Sokka's probably better than Doug. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I you're stuck with forgot, dumb Doug. I forgot Avatar was a Nicktoon. Yeah, that's a good one. Yep. 
Didn't uh, Disney also like buy Doug and then like ruin it? Yeah, That's it brought it to no, yeah their Saturday morning thing. It, yeah. I think it aged it up a little bit. It it like um, his Roger. Sleeves got longer. I didn't like that. Remember they made yeah. his sleeves longer. Why? <laughs> That's it's like all right, we're gonna age him up. How do we do that? Done with. They went Doug. from here to here. Uh, no, not on board. With like, didn't need it. Cover the uh, gross elbows. I feel like a lot of it was relatable, kind of in the sense of you know, hey Arnold, like you know, you're out, just you're just a dude. You got a crush on a girl. You you wish you knew. You you have like weird superhero fantasies. You got a cool band that you like. It was very like one to one. And then went into Disney and it's like, I don't know what this is. And why is Roger rich now? Okay. What happened there? <laughs> I've never looked into the history of what what happened. Like it's so iconic. Money. And Nickelodeon. How did they? they how did this they? I think it honestly. It it was it was on the tail end of like the Nicktoon drop, and so while some of their stuff started to like their audience was aging up, and so Disney had picked up that one, and I think they picked up something else at the time too uh, to try to like keep the popularity going. But the 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 fans were moving on to other things. Um, but let us know in the comments what Nicktoon you could relate to the most, and why was it Crumb? From Arrow Monsters. <laughs> not, a, not a bad pick. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's uh, so good. Uh, big shout out and thank you to Lisa Fels for being here today. We have uh, links to her stuff down below with a new podcast and her band and a new album coming out Buy soon. So album. go check it all out. Do and it. of course, <laughs> we have a Patreon to uh, for Ogsog in the description as well, where we have extended versions of all of our stuff, including an extra topic with Lisa Foils, which only you can see there. So check it out and we'll see you later. Hey, thanks for watching, and thanks to all our patrons who help make this show possible. Uh, you can see their names over there, and you could get your name over there as well if you uh, check out uh, the, our Patreon in our description there. And also, uh, what am I? What am I saying? And also, uh, oh, and also, be sure to check out uh, Lisa Foils, her band, and uh, her links are all in the description there. And we'll see you next time. Bye.